Um, and then uh, one minute for each question. All right. So hi everyone, I'm Michelle Slater. I'm running for Northwest ISD Play 7. I am a parent of a seven-year-old girl who is differently able, nonverbal, in the district. I've seen a lot of good stuff and I've seen a lot of not great stuff. We are, th th there's some work that we can do and for me, I'm coming at this as a parent. There's a lot of things I've seen, a lot of things I'm concerned about. My daughter, she comes home every day with something in her folder how she felt. I have not seen one thing about academics. I've asked about it about academics, and it's not right. And this morning, <laughs> this is what you know, the, the fierce mama bear comes out, is that the pornographic books are in our elementary schools. They've been exposed to my child, and I am a furious mom. She is nonverbal. She cannot tell me what happens. And I see this. She's been bullied. We have a Zero tolerance, zero tolerance bullying policy. Last year, she came home from school. Her hair pulled out of her ponytail. She couldn't tell me. There was no notes. I had to call the school, get a hold of the principal, and ask what happened. This wasn't the first time. It wasn't the second time. It wasn't even the third time. This was going on for months. This little boy in her gen ed classroom, so she is in a structured classroom and a gen ed. She switches throughout the day. This little boy is always going and harassing her. Nothing was ever noticed to the parents. No phone call, no note, no nothing. It took something to happen physically to her to come home for me to see it. And then when I asked about it, he just likes her. That's all I got. So when I'm standing here as a parent, I am standing with that line. I am against the CRT, the SEL, even if there's no framework that you guys are following with Castle, you create your own one. It's the same thing. It's the same end goal. It is there. The porn in the schools, it's there. It's not misinformation. I've seen it. My daughter's come across it. It is not right. So as a conservative, I uphold the parental rights. We have the right to know what's happening in the schools, what's happening in those classrooms. And it is paramount. The line has been drawn, and I'm standing firm. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Jennifer Murphy. I am the incumbent. Um, I've been in my seat for two years. Uh, I was elected um, in 2020 when the election was delayed until November, and um, I'm 46 years old. I'm the mother of two, um, so I do have children in the schools as well. Um, I just graduated one of my children from Northwest High School in 21, and I have another son who is a sophomore at Northwest High School as well, um, so he will be graduating in 25. Um, <clears throat> my family has been in the district for 13 years. Uh, we also lived in San Antonio for a while, so we've been in Texas for the most of our adult lives. Um, we got here as quick as we could, as we'd like to say. And our kids were both born in San Antonio, so they're natives. Um, I grew up in a small town in Illinois. Um, that's something that probably many of you do not know, or many of the people around me do not know. Um, blue collar, uh, working class family, uh, all trades men and women, um, a Catholic family, I grew up Catholic, I'm a practicing Catholic, and um, uh, we, we are very devout in our faith. Um, we learned service learning from our grandparents. They taught us how to be um, ingrained in our daily life. The service isn't just something you do, it's something that you are. Um, so that's how I live my life. Um, I was, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, very, very um, fortunate to go to college at the University of Nebraska on an athletic scholarship, um, which was an amazing experience. And um, that's where I was uh, able to learn the sport, or love the sport of bowling. Anybody in the room a bowler, by the way? Anybody? I love it. Somebody in the back. Way to go. Um, my professional background, tw over 20 years in nonprofit, um, fundraising, philanthropy, I'm currently um, in the same line of business as Mr. Pendergrass. I work at Texas Wesleyan University, um, and I do philanthropy there. 
Um, most of my nonprofit work has been with Big Brothers Big Sisters, um, some different mentoring organizations, but I've also worked in K-12 for quite a few years. I worked for Northside Independent School District in San Antonio where I was uh, working with um, grants, recognitions, and the compensatory programs where we worked with all the state educational funding. Um, I've also been an avid tutor here in the district, a star tutor, and a sub teacher. Um, I was, I'm a 2019 a leadership at ISD graduate, which is a, a, a leadership program within the district. Um, I believe in serving every day. It's very important, and I wanna build a community for all of our schools. Our schools are where we find our community. That's where we found our community. And all of our kids deserve deserve that education every day. Thank you, All right, so um, rehashes some of the questions you've heard. Uh, and just to reiterate, so the teaching of CRT is banned officially in Texas, but we know it's crept into not only the curriculum, but we have rogue teachers everywhere, uh, rogue counselors who are teaching this. So how would you uh, make sure that this is not taught in any form or fashion to our children and as an incumbent Have you done anything uh, to ensure that that has not happened at, at Northwest High School? CRT is banned obviously in the state of Texas and one of the things that I in my job I deal with compliance every single day so one of the things that I, I look for is, are we following the rules? You're always, always, always under the gun and you need to follow the rules because your, your families depend on that. Um, the laws are in place for a reason. We as a district need to follow those laws. If we have a rogue teacher, then that needs to be addressed. Um, but those, those CRT items um, are not in our classrooms. If they do creep in, that's on a specific teacher and it needs to be dealt with that way. Um, funny, um, you know, CRT has been so prevalent the last couple of years. Um, I think it was maybe two, year, two or three years ago I even really first learned what CRT was. Um, so I'm still educating myself to understand exactly what it means. But that is something that, you know, as, as a state, in the state of Texas, it's not something that we are, we are looking to even implement. Uh, same question, so just to make sure you, that it's clear, uh, it's crept into the school and the curriculum. How would you make sure that CRT is not taught in any form to our kids? Absolutely. So being a board, you are the executive level. Everything falls on your head. You are accountable to everything. If something's happening at that lower level with teachers, you're still accountable. If it's not happening and you're not get, seeing it come up the stream, then you need to look at your superintendent and why are they not reporting up? If the superintendent doesn't know about it, why is he not pushing on to the administration and the teachers that they need to do about it? So it starts at that top level and it needs to be pushed all the way down. And if it's not getting reported back up, then you still need to start looking at each layer on why is it not happening? And that's generally how all your different boards and executive steering boards work. They have to work in collaboration and knowing the different, who's responsible for what, but that vision and strategy and the adherence and accountability is at that top level. So ultimately, the board is responsible for that. If they don't know it's there, that's a gap. That is a problem that needs to be resolved. Thank you. All right, so uh, what policy should the school have in place in regards to library books with sexual content and LGBT themes? And I want to also add to this, this also includes the teachers' libraries. Because as we all know, and if you don't know that, every teacher in their classroom can have a library where they can have their own books. A math teacher can have books of any kind in their, in their personal library. So how would you address at the school board level uh, what policy we should have in place in libraries, in the public library as well as uh, the teacher's library? The uh, public libraries, just to clarify, the school public school, libraries, school or yeah, library. we have no control over that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, again, policy starts at that top level. Right now, we know that they're there. It is proof. I have seen it myself. There's other parents that have seen it. If Again, if the board says that they're not there today, that's a gap. That's an issue if you're denying that these books act, actually exist today. And that... that I just came across the book today with my daughter, too, so I am, I'm on fire with this one. We need to create, first thing we would end up doing is creating the different committees to start looking through every single library and start identifying what books are there 
and then start taking remediation actions against those books. They should not be there. They should not be on display for our children. Our children are impressionable. They're innocent, and it is not the place for the school for them to be able to learn that type of thing there. That is a parent's choice at home, outside of the public education. Okay, so what policy should the school have in place in regards to library books in the, in the main library as well as the teaching library? Um, everything needs to be age appropriate. Um, our, our teachers, especially our librarians, are highly educated individuals who go through extensive uh, continuing education. And they work very diligently to continue to look at books. And they work with their principals and they work with our curriculum department. Now if something creeps in that needs to be addressed. And again, every parent has the right to to talk to the schools and tell them what we want our kids to see and what we don't. Um, I think it's very important that we are all involved in our children's education, absolutely. I mean, I feel the same way about mine. Um, but we need to also be able to trust the professionals to make sure that they are protecting our kids too because we are sending them to the schools, so we need to be able to trust them as well. Okay, so the, uh, the last one, uh, TASPE. Are you okay with Northwest being part of it? Would you want to pull out of it? What's your position on Northwest ISV being part of T the Texas Association of School Board? TASPE is an interesting organization. Um, I've been able to go to two, two or three maybe TASPE um, uh, learning experiences. And TASPE has been a great learning uh, of a place to connect with people around the state. Um, different school districts, um, different school board members who um, have similar districts to you and have very different districts to you. It's very interesting to learn from them because we learn from each other. What we learn at the TASB is not uh, what TASB mandates. Um, they do do legislative updates and they give us really good information about what's happening according to the law of the, in, in the state. Um, but I, I've learned a lot because we are also mandated to have different continuing education hours every year um, through, through, through the TASB structure. Um, do I advocate for leaving it? No. Do I always agree with some of the legislative updates that come out or their guidance? No. But you take it with a grain of salt and you do what's right for your district. I got this one. All right. I have a nonverbal daughter. Tasby said it was okay for gender neutral bathrooms. How do you think I would respond if something happened to my daughter in the bathroom? Right. That scares me every single time that she goes. Yeah. Recent ARD meeting, I made sure in her IEP that she was escorted to the bathroom. She literally cannot scream. If something happened, we wouldn't know. She's nonverbal. She can't talk. She has no voice. I am her advocate just like many other children, and that's why I'm standing up here, to be an advocate for our children. Right. So, TASB, I'm not a fan, because they have harmful ideologies that they're trying to push on us, and I do not trust that when it comes to my child. Right. Thank you, ladies. All right, that's it for the forum, right? Um, all right, I just want to say, yeah, yeah, you can go ahead, please. Um, Thank you very much, ladies. So uh, y'all have heard from the candidates. You've heard from a number of them. I would strongly encourage you to talk to them. If you, if you heard an answer that you didn't like or you heard an answer that you loved, talk to them. Ask them. Ask them to elucidate on it, right? But if you have a candidate that you truly support and you live in that district, please support them. Please get out. Take a Saturday here and there, or every Saturday, just a few hours, go knock doors. Go out there, get yard signs if they've got them. Do what you can to support these candidates. This is a thankless position as those who are incumbents can testify. It's not fun to be on a school board. This is probably one of the most caustic positions that you can run for. So please support them in every way that you can, financially, with your time, with your prayers, 
please support them. It means to, it means more to them than you can realize. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.